Today, I am watching Girl Reading. Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing part number six of my bookcase tour. So, this is the sixth and bottom shelf of that bookcase. And after this video, we're on to the next bookcase! Yay! I, we, I think at the end of this video... Yeah, we're still up to only C-O-L by author surname. So, we, we've got a long way to go. I mean, let's just get started, shall we? So in the last video, we did Agatha Christie, and we are basically going for my next book after Agatha Christie, which is Winston Churchill, <laughs> appropriately enough, I guess. They were both contemporaries, I guess, weren't they? So this is The Wit and Wisdom of Winston Churchill, and uh, it's just this really beautiful little... Obviously, you can see it's quite an old-school book. It actually says, With compliments of the Churchill Intercontinental London. Selections from his works and speeches with an introduction by Jack House, published by Hyperion. It's just beautiful, really. It's just a lovely little book. Next up, we have an incredibly battered copy of Chronicle of the Year 1989. And I, this is here because it comes as CH, I guess, under my uh, my alphabetized system. Now, what's cute about this is it's got this little inscription in it. Look, to Dane, here are all the things... What does it say? These, to Dane, these are all things that happened the special year you were born. Love, Mummy. So that's why I still have this copy as well. So this, the guy who defied the tanks, that was two days before I was born. Yeah, the only thing that is on my, the, the only piece of news in this that actually happened on my birthday is, in France, Michael Chang from the USA won the French Open tennis title, beating Stefan Edberg of Sweden. Okay, then we have Magical Mabel's Adventure in the Tower of London by Wendy Clark, illustrated by Emma Jo Newton. This is just a kid's book set in the Tower of London. I think I was sent a copy of this through my uh, book blog. I mean, it's just quite cute, really. I mean, it's no amazing piece of literature, but if you have kids and or you're interested in the Tower of London, for example, here is the Traitor's Gate. Then we have Cassandra Clare. So as you guys probably know, I've been reading through these a book a month with various booktubers, including Kit Kats Can Read, Damien Tariquez, Sophisticated Books, and Lisa's West Coast Reads. This is just my Cassandra Clare collection and what I've read so far. So we have City of Ashes, which is book two. City of Bones, which is book one. But I don't keep them in alf in uh, I'm keeping them in alphabetical order. That said, I do have these in a box set. So once I've read all of them, then the box set will go into my my bookshelves, and then they will be in numerical order because they'll be part of the box set. If that makes sense. But yeah, City of Ashes, City of Bones, City of Glass, and then we have Clockwork Angel as well. So that's how far I have got with these books. They are all right. Then we have Arthur C. Clarke, Childhood's End. So this is the only Arthur C. Clarke that I've read, and actually I don't really remember it. It says here, though, it's one of his defining legacies. Prescient novel about first contact gone wrong. Oh, that was it. Yeah, it's like a an alien invasion kind of thing, except I believe it was more about politics between... Yeah, between Earth and the Overlords, that was it. Okay, then we have Jim Clarkson, Talking Crow, and this is a poetry collection. It says, the poems in this collection are a bit miserable, but they're also a bit funny. If you can, please read them at five in the morning, or in car parks, or at the top of the stairs waiting for children to go to sleep. There we go, let me read you this, this random one. This is yet another one about death, and we have some nice little images to go with it as well. Rhetoric of the world exhausted, the grass overhead grows, muddy as always, as water seeps down to your turned around bones. You create your own angles now, without pit props, or the need to blast anything. The weight has come on, but you don't need pulling from it. Your Zoothrath is with me still, and your predator love of the Zulus. How I could do with your karma side though. Stir, my lord of the ground, stir. Rest your moth-backed hands on my shoulders. So this one, it does have like images to go with each of the poems as well. I mean, it's not amazing, but it's pretty good, I would say. It's enjoyable enough. It's probably not really my kind of poetry, but I mean, I think the, the images that go with it do, do a nice little job. Okay, then we have two by an indie author friend of mine. So this is J.G. Clay. It's actually a pen name for a chap called Pardit Basra, but I'm sure he won't mind me saying that. Actually, the reason I think he uses his pen name is because basically it's easier to sell books if your surname is Clay than if it's Basra. So that's a damning indictment of the publishing industry right there. But anyway, <laughs> so we have here Peace and Quiet, Time and Space, which is his novel. And then we have here Tales of Blood and Sulphur, which is short stories. And 
Both of these are enjoyable enough. I would recommend Tales of Blood and Sulfur first if you want to check out his work. He's kind of an indie horror writer. I think Peace and Quiet Time and Space is my understanding. I think this has possibly changed a bit since I read it. Peace and Quiet Time and Space is much more of a world building exercise, I think, like to, to the point where sometimes I struggled to really understand what was going on. Whereas in Tales of Blood and Sulfur, because they are short stories, it's a lot simpler to just wrap your head around what's happening. So I think it's probably the best book to go for if, you, uh, if you're new to him and you want get, to get to know his style. Then we have some books by this dude called Dane Cobain, with me. <laughs> I just, I don't, don't know if, you're, if you know that. But uh, also, there are some CDs here as well, because I make music. So I'll just take you through each of these and try and sell you on these. If you want to buy copies, copies are available. It's available in physical and electronic copies. Uh, probably the best way to get hold of them is just danecobain.com forward slash Amazon. Or if you're American, forward slash Amazon USA, and that will take you to the Amazon page. Or you can also get them through the Create Space store and other places. Oh, I'll do you a signed copy. I don't know why I'm doing this with my hand, but I'm trying to choke myself. But I'll do you a signed copy if you're interested. Anyway, enough waffling. Here we have Coming Up to the House, which is a horror novella and screenplay. I'll, I'll skip in so you can see the the screenplay layout there and this actually started out as a screenplay and then I decided to write a novelization of it basically so the screenplay I wrote kind of inspired from my university studies so I did a module on screenwriting so I wrote a screenplay for a full-length horror movie it's basically a haunted house story and then I wrote the novelization as well and what's kind of cool about it is that the screenplay itself the rights on it uh, creative commons share and share alike so anybody can take my screenplay and make a film they don't have to pay me any royalties or anything like that you know so the is it's the the novelization is the bit that the copyright applies to all right then we have discordia this is album number three actually this illustration here i will show you in a minute it was taken from my poetry collection it was done by a talented illustrator called uh, steve woodcock and basically he drew a bunch of illustrations to go in my po in my poetry collection and i thought i'd reuse the, uh, this image for Discordia, which is album number three of mine. All my albums are on Spotify as well. Okay, then we have a Driven. This is my latest book. This is book one in the Lightfold series. It's basically a detective novel. It's like a cozy detective novel, but in the 21st century. So while it does take a lot of inspiration from things like Agatha Christie and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, at the same time, it is very much a product of our modern day society. And there are things like self-driving cars and Lightfold's assistant, Miley O'Hara, is a computer whiz kid. So I wanted to make a kind of contemporary, quirky, cozy detective, and that's what this is. Book two coming out fairly soon, by the way. So you might want to get on that if you want to read book two when that comes out. That'll be later this year. All right, here we have Eyes Like Lighthouses When the Boats Come Home. These, This is my first poetry collection. I'm working on a second one at the moment called Kiss Kiss Death Death, which will probably be out next year. I said I was going to show you that illustration, didn't I? I'm not sure which one it is. So basically each of the sections has a different header image. So that one's Anxious Words. I think it was his found wolves and foxes. Here we go. Don't panic. So there we go. And I guess I'll read you the first poem from Don't Panic. So it's called Shit at Xbox. Mate, I've written books and I've read them. I've read books that made the world burner, that made me fall in love with my own imagination. I've recorded albums and blagged so much I don't know who I am anymore. I've made people cry and I've made people laugh and I'm delightfully weird, at least in my eyes. I've stood on the shoulders of giants and consumed my own body weight several times over. I kneeled young and I knelt on John and now old Johnny's rotten. I read his words and sing his songs so Johnny's not forgotten. I've learned to distill the past and present and to try to change the future. I've fought the sword witch and live to tell the tale. I've singed my own skin from burning the candles too brightly. Live through 500 sunsets in the prisons and the flower pots and Birmingham is next to go. Chemicals from factories poisoning canals and I can't score a goal on FIFA but I live my life without a walkthrough so don't go sharing spoilers. I write poems that don't exist. And you can read those poems in this book. Now actually, considering I picked that poem out totally at random, that was quite an appropriate one, really. <laughs> okay, then we have Formally, The Rise and Fall of a Social Network. This is basically literary fiction, or that's what we call it. It's kind of also been described as a techno thriller. People have told me it has elements of a whodunit, and that wasn't planned at all, but I guess it does. <laughs> actually, you'll see as well on the back, that quote there is from J.G. Clay, who we've just discussed. So there's that. And uh, yeah. I kind of did the cover design on this myself. I kind of did and kind of didn't. Basically, I had a cover designer I was working with and she did a lot. She did these red bits 
and all of these bits and like where the black is and all that kind of stuff and then in, i basically picked out this image here and and did that so yeah yeah co-cover design that one then we have no rest for the wicked which is my first book it is a horror novella well it's a supernatural thriller uh and basically it's about angels these evil angels kind of come to earth and they go around and judge people to determine whether they think they're sinners or not. And if they are judged to be sinners, they then kill them. The problem being is that we all sin because everything is a sin. And yeah, this is published by... Well, this is actually the Forsaken edition. But there's another edition with a different cover design that is out through Dragon Moon Press at the moment. Alright, then we have Nocturne. This is my first album. That's actually a picture of me holding a beer when I, when I was at university. I recorded all of this in my old uni room. And, and so this is kind of old now. I think 2010 I released this. There's another beautiful picture of me on the CD there. Lots of kind of weird writing-y stuff in the design. Next up we have Social Paranoia, How Consumers and Brands Can Stay Safe in a Connected World. This is a non-fiction book. It's basically about social networking sites and how they kind of change the way we think and the way that we act. It kind of asks the question of should you be paranoid in a, an increasingly connected world? And my argument is yes, you probably should be. But there are also things you can do to kind of safeguard yourself and protect yourself. And I kind of cover all those in this book. And I mostly wrote that because I used to work in social media marketing. So I figured I might as well write a book that would kind of boost my career as opposed to just making people smile, I guess. And then we have Subject, Verb, Object, which is an anthology of new writing. So this has 18 different indie authors. It actually has J.G. Clay in this as well, as well as some other people. Stephen Colgan, he's been mentioned on my channel in the past. Uh, I can't remember whether I've talked about any of the other ones here, but yeah, a lot of these are High Wickham authors as well. I'll read you the list of authors, not that I suspect you'll have heard of any of them unless you've heard of them through me, but... We have Eileen Maxim, Clive Whitelock, James Torrance, Heber El Husseini, Sharon Anderson, Michael Israel Jarvis, Amar Rana Deshmukh, Neil Denham, Chris Gower, Dane Cobain, Alex Kimmel, Stephen Colgan, JG Clay, JC Miller, Chico Kidd, Ollie Jacobs, Danny Brown, and Pamelise Harris, who is also my editor. And yeah, it's just a nice little thing with 18 different stories in. Do check it out. Especially because I love all of these authors. That's why I kind of invited them all to participate. Then we have Kurt Cobain, Journals, If You Read, You'll Judge. It's been a long time since I actually read this. I think I've read... Well, I got a copy of this when it first came out. Which was a fair old time ago now. 2002. So, this came out closer to his death than now. Which is kind of weird. Next up, we have Jarvis Cocker, Mother, Brother, Lover. These are selected lyrics. Beautiful Faber edition. And Jarvis Cocker was in Pulp. So, for example, let's see if we've got common people in here. I'm sure we do. It's their most well-known song. She came from Greece. She had a thirst for knowledge. She studied sculpture at St. Martin's College. That's where I... Bam, 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 caught her eye. Bam, 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 bam. Then we have Paolo Coelho, The Alchemist. I read and reviewed this recently. Did I review it? I don't think I did review it. I think I just mentioned it in my wrap-up. There is a review of it coming out. In fact, it was in my five fiction reviews video. I don't know. I'll link to the video below that mentions this if I can find it. Basically, I didn't like it. It was it was surprisingly long for a surprisingly short book and just kind of felt to be full of like moralizations and stuff. It just felt as though the author was trying to be like, yes, I'm better than you and I because I believe in this and that and this. And also there was the worst insta love I have ever read, I think, in it. Okay, now we get up to my Leonard Cohen collection. So this is Beautiful Losers. This is a novel. And actually, I really like this. It's called described as a classic erotic tragedy. Desc uh, tells the story of the beautiful losers at the end of life's game and I don't know I mean Cohen is a very good writer actually I mean I would say as good a novelist as he is a, sing a songwriter I think and he was kind of writing books and poetry and stuff before he got into music and I would say Beautiful Losers is probably probably my favorite of his books or one of my favorites actually this is another one this is Book of Longing that's also kind of a favorite and this is a mixture of kind of poetry and short fiction and some drawings and stuff. So those are obviously self-portraits. There's one in here that I'm going to have to find because it's, it's stuck in my head. This thing, it's just really stuck in my head for years. It's probably because I do play guitar. So I found it relatable. I wonder if this has I Long to Hold Some Lady in it as well. This is Death of a Ladies Man, a collection of poetry and prose. Big old picture of him on the front there. Does this have I Long to Hold Some Lady in? 
Here we have Leonard Cohen, Everyman's Library Pocket Poets. I bet this has got it in. Yeah, it does. Page 25. All right, I might not know it exactly, but I'm going to give it a go. So the poem, I Long to Hold Some Lady, goes something like, I long to hold some lady, for my love is far away, and will not come tomorrow, and was not here today. There is no flesh so perfect as on my lady's bone, and yet it seems so distant when I am all alone, as though she were a masterpiece in some castle town, that pilgrims come to visit, and priests to copy down. Alas, I cannot travel to a love I hold so deep, or sleep so close beside a love I long to keep. I long to hold some lady, for flesh is warm and sweet, cold skeletons go marching each night beside my feet. There we go. Next up we have Let Us Compare Mythologies. And this is another poetry collection, I think. Might even have some, some of these have lyrics in as well, so it's always hard to kind of tell which ones are which. And it has a, a quote by William Faulkner at the start of it as well. Not one that particularly sticks out in my head, but I mean I've got a few collections as you can tell. This is Stranger Music, Selected Poems and Songs. This is obviously a big old one. So some of these have commentary on it as well, where Cohen himself has kind of provided some insight into what the song itself is potentially about. And also interestingly, some of his songs start out kind of as poems and even as prose, and then get turned into songs, which I think is very interesting. And you can kind of see that happening in this book. Okay, then we have The Favourite Game, his classic novel. This is another, just, his novels are great, to be honest, and they really reflect kind of where he was in that period in his life. He wasn't famous, you know, he was just... An average Jewish dude in Montreal I think it was yeah Montreal so and he kind of captures that and shows what it was like to be a Jew in Montreal in 1938 or whatever you know we have the spice box of earth Leonard Cohen and again this is another collection some of these are like duplicated so for example I just saw the cuckold song in this and I also saw that in one of those when I was flicking through but again you got to own everything haven't you so that's the end of my Leonard Cohen collection. Then I have this, which is by David Colbert, The Magical Worlds of Harry Potter, A Treasury of Myths, Legends, and Fascinating Tales. Oh no, Fascinating Fact, my bad. So I guess it just dives into some of the different mythology. So that there is, besides male, what does the arrival of an owl mean? On the back it says, what kind of nightmares created Voldemort? Why do wizards use wands? Who is the most amazing Animagus? Animagus, however you say it. This here is Boundless Magic, a historical fantasy by Lau V. Cole, and uh, she's an indie author. I believe the way this works is that she sort of found like a portal from today's modern world that took her into this sort of 16th century fantasy world, and so you have a lot of this kind of historical stuff in terms of the etiquette and the way people lived and stuff, but also the fantasy element. And I did really enjoy this, actually. I, d I don't know whether this is the first in the series, uh, there's like Wiccan influences and all that kind of stuff. All in all, I, I mean, for an, for an indie book, I quite enjoyed this. And I probably will check out some more of Lowry Cole's work at some point. Here we have Samuel Taylor Coleridge, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner and other poems. This is one of the beautiful Dover Thrift editions. It's actually got a bit of fluff on it, so I'll take that off. I've actually been to Coleridge Cottage, which is where Coleridge lived when he wrote this as well. Although that's just not why I bought this. I just bought this because I wanted to re read The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner because it's, a, I guess, a bit of sort of... English literature history, you know? Now we have some books by Stephen Colgan, who we touched upon briefly earlier. He was in Subject, Verb, Object with me. He's a local author from High Wycombe, comes to some of my spoken word nights. And first up we have A Murder to Die For, which I have in fact reviewed on this channel. This is his first novel. It's kind of a murder mystery, but it's also almost like a farce. It's set in this little English village, and it's a very, very much like a send-up of the genre, but I also just enjoyed it because it is also a murder mystery in its own right. Uh, Cortagonist, if you're watching this, you need to read this book. I, I just think you'd really enjoy it. Also, if you're an Anglophile, you'll like this book. If you're a fan of Agatha Christie, you'll like this book. I mean, the main, main character in this is effectively Agnes Crabb, even though she's dead way before it starts. But this all f sort of follows this fate that surrounds Agnes Crabb's work. And Agnes Crabb is very much the Agatha Christie of this world. It's just really enjoyable and very quirky. And then we have some of his non-fiction. So we have... Constable Colgan's Connectoscope, how one thing leads to another. Basically, he used to be a policeman, and this kind of takes the way that different things relate to each other in different ways. So, for example, there is a connection between Buffalo Bill and Les Mis. Chess has a connection with H.G. Wells' Martians, if you know where to look. The trainers on your feet can be connected to the Greek goddess of victory. Well, yeah, I think she was Nike, wasn't she? Who is connected to an ingredient used in making absinthe, which is connected to the voice of Danger Mouse's assistant, Penfold, who is... 
everything really is connected and if you read this book you can kind of see how and then this kind of builds on that this is called joined up thinking by the way these are blurred by Stephen Fry as well because Colgan and, and Fry kind of know each other Stephen Colgan actually works as a researcher one of the QI elves on QI so yeah this is kind of a non-fiction book that isn't specifically about any one thing but it it does make you think and also it makes you laugh and you learn a few things so I would recommend checking it out especially if you're kind of a fan of trivia and last but by no means least on this shelf is the gigantic beard that was evil by Stephen Collins and this is a graphic novel basically about this island where everything is normal and in order and very kind of meticulous and then this dude starts growing this massive beard and the beard is evil basically and uh, the art style in it's fantastic it kind of it kind of feels like a, a story with a moral in it except I don't know what the moral actually is but um yeah, it's just it's just beautiful. Look at this. You can pretend I have a massive beard. So uh, if you if you enjoy beard based humor and or graphic novels, check this one out. So anyway, that's about it for this bookcase. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, which ones are your favorite. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this. In my next one, we have things like Arthur Conan Doyle. Oh, what else do we do? I don't, I don't know. I can't actually see. Oh, we have Lucy Crookshanks over there. Oh, and we start the Roald Dahl, I think, in the next one. So in the next bookshelf, we finally get to D. So yeah, look forward to that. In the meantime, hit subscribe if you're new here, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.